Hi guys, Jimmy McIntyre here with another Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to look at how to get rid of really stubborn chromatic aberration. So if you've watched my previous video, 5 ways to remove CA, and you've still got stubborn chromatic aberration that just won't leave, the techniques in this video will definitely help you. And I am going to show you how to remove the chromatic aberration using Raya Pro 5, my Photoshop software. But don't worry if you don't have Raya Pro, because I'll show you how to do that without my software. And I've actually got a free action that you can download and this will do everything for you because you'll see when I show you how to do this manually, there's quite a few steps involved. So this action will make it a lot easier. To download that action, you just need to subscribe to my free tutorials on my website. You'll see a link popping up on the screen right now. And on top of this action, you'll get a comprehensive free beginner's Photoshop video course, my free luminosity mask panel and lots of other things too. Now let's have a look at the chromatic aberration. So we can see if we zoom into the left here, we've got some serious fringing. We've got some cyans and some magentas here. So how do we get rid of that? Well, in Raya Pro, we can go to the filters and finish tab here and we can press clean CA. And now we get this Gaussian blur dialogue and I like to leave the radius at about 20. So 19.4 is good enough. Then I can press OK. Now, on that CA layer, you see we've got a black mask. If I disable the mask, you can see we've removed the chromatic aberration. So that's with the mask visible and that's with the mask invisible. So we've removed the CA, but we've got some coloring issues around the edges of the building. And we've also really affected the color in this golden area here. So we need to remove the chromatic aberration as cleanly as possible. Now, one way to do that is by choosing a paintbrush, a white brush, and really, really carefully painting out the chromatic aberration. You see, we're doing a great job of removing that CA completely, but that's gonna take a long time to go over all of these edges. A quicker way to do that and more precise is to go into Instamask and click on this button that says Edge M, which is Edge Mask, and this is gonna create a mask which selects our edges. So you see the black areas here? Those are our edges and those will in the end be our selections. So we wanna make those edges really thick so we're encompassing as much of the edge as possible. So I brought along the mid-tone slider in this levels dialog. The highlight slider I'll bring a little bit to the left just to create some contrast. And there we go, that edge looks really thick. Then I can press okay. Next you'll see this Gaussian blur dialog. Now I like to put that at around 3.6, 3.5, and what that does is it thickens up our edge, just spreads it out a little bit more so that we're encompassing more of that chromatic aberration. Then I press OK. And now we just have a couple more things to do. Firstly, we have to turn this into a selection. Right now, the edges are black. But of course, in masking, the areas we want to select need to be white. So we need to invert the mask. We can do that by pressing Control and I or Command and I on a Mac. And now we've inverted the mask and we've got these edges selected. Then with our sliders in Instamask, I'm just gonna thicken up those edges again. And we're making these edges as white as possible. We don't want the sky around here to be too white because that's what we don't want to affect. When we're happy, we can either select our remove CA layer and press apply, and that will apply that mask to the whole image. So it'll be a really quick adjustment or we can just press select white. And the select white button pretty much does everything you need it to do. It selects the mask, it creates an active selection, it hides the active selection, it chooses a brush with a white foreground. So all you need to do is start painting out the chromatic aberration. And because we're constrained by that selection, I can make a bigger brush. I don't have to have a small brush. Now my brush opacity is set to 100%. Watch this, I can paint out the chromatic aberration completely remove it. And there's the scion chromatic aberration and up here. So with this golden bit, we will have to be a little bit careful and go over it slowly, but you get the general idea. And the great thing is if you want to strengthen the effect of that chromatic aberration reduction, you can just, when you're finished painting everything out, you can hold down control and D or command and D and that will deselect your active selection and now you're free to paint any area you want. So if you want to reinforce any chromatic aberration adjustments, you can just 
paint over it. Naturally, that doesn't look very good because you can see the sky's become discolored, so I'm going to undo that. And let's see what happens if we click on the mask and I'll show you what the mask looks like. You see, we've only painted in that area that we created the mask around, so we're not affecting the sky. If I disable this mask, you see, we've now affected far more areas. And in particular, look at the blue edging along this building here. And if I enable the mask, watch this return to gray. There you go. You might not be able to see it on the video, it might be quite subtle. So remember we're zoomed in a lot here. So at the moment it's 263. So if we zoom out, you can see these areas have absolutely no chromatic aberration. So how do you do this with the action that I gave you? So we can delete this layer, this chromatic aberration layer. We can go to the actions panel where it says remove CA. We can choose remove CA start and then just press start. The action will then take you through everything you need. So you, you can leave that at 20. And of course, you're gonna bring along the mid-tone slider to really thicken up the edge just as before. Press OK. And we'll leave the radius at 3.6. Then you see how the action has automatically inverted the mask for you? We can thicken up those edges once more, the white edges. And then we can press OK. And now we don't have to do anything else. The action is taking care of everything. All we need to do is start painting. And again, once more, we're removing the chromatic aberration very quickly and very precisely. And when you're finished, you have to press Ctrl and D or Command and D to deselect the active selection. Now, if you're the type of person who likes to do these things manually, let me show you how to do that. It does involve quite a few steps, which is why I recommend the action or Raya Pro but let's remove the CA anyway. So I'm gonna zoom in to this area here and you see it's quite thick, the chromatic aberration around here. So to get rid of this, let me just zoom out a little bit. We've got CA all the way along here, the top edges as well. Now to create the layer that removes chromatic aberration, we hold down Control, Alt, Shift and E or Command, Option, Shift and E on a Mac. We rename this layer to remove CA, change the blend mode of this layer to color. From there, we go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And look at how, when we bring the radius up to, let's say 20, in fact, I'll type the number in there. Look at how we've removed the chromatic aberration. It's disappeared from the edge here. We can press okay, hold down alt or option on a Mac, left click on this add a mask icon. And now we've created a black mask on that layer. Now we have to find the edges, and we do that by holding down Control, Alt, Shift, and E, or Command, Option, Shift, and E, just as before. We'll call this Edge. We'll create a black and white layer here, and right-click on the black and white layer, and merge down. So we've got a black and white image. Then we'll go to the filter up here, Stylize, Find Edges, and now we've made a selection of our edges. To further refine the edges, we can hold down Control and L or Command and L, and then we bring the mid-tone slider along to thicken up those dark edges. Let's do that a little bit more. We wanna have some of the sky here. We prefer that to be wider. When we're happy, we can press OK. Then again, we go to Filter, this time to Blur, Gaussian Blur, and we're gonna use 3.5 radius. So we've thickened up that border again. We hold down Control and I or Command and I to invert the edge mask, then Control and L or Command and L again. And once more, we are thickening up those white edges. I'm just gonna bring the shadow slider down a little bit, just so we don't have the sky selected. Then we press OK. Now we need to turn this into an actual mask. So we just create a mask on the edge layer Go to Image, Apply Image, and have your settings exactly the same as mine, and press OK. Then hold down Control or Command on a Mac, and left click on the mask of your edge layer, and you see we've got an active selection. Then we can delete that layer, select the mask of the Remove Chromatic Aberration layer, hold down Control in H or Command in H to hide the marching ants. Then we select our brush with a white foreground, at 100% opacity, we can start painting out the chromatic aberration. You can see that took a long time to do this. And that's why I prefer to use actions. 
So I'm just painting this out very easily. Don't have to take my time because the selection is doing all the work for us. And this is the before and after comparison. Makes a huge difference. Let me just zoom into this area here where it's worse. So that's before and after. Fantastic. Now I'm going to hold down Control and D or Command and D to deselect the active selection and choose the brush again. And you'll see along this ridge, it's still a little bit red. So if we want to have more control, we simply select our white brush again. And because we're not constrained by that selection anymore, we can reduce the opacity of our brush to 50%. Watch, I'm going to paint over this area. And we're just further refining our adjustment. So there's the before and after. So that's how you remove stubborn chromatic aberration in Photoshop. If you found this video useful, please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and share this video with whoever you think will also find it useful. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.